to Psalm 37, please. Psalm 37. And just whenever you're turning to that, I just want to thank David Good and Mark for uh, taking the services on Sunday while Mandy and I had a little break. We met up with our son, Christopher, and we had a lovely time together, and it was good to see him, and we really appreciated that. So thank you for your prayers for us, and we're glad to be back in harness again this morning, and we trust that the Lord will bless. We're doing this little series <coughs> that we had called a, the Preparation Series, and I want to speak this morning about being prepared to wait on God. And this psalm, it reduces us to that this morning here, and I want to read a number of verses together. So Psalm 37, <coughs> verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thy envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And then cast your eye down to verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he judgeth. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Amen. And we know that the Lord will bless to us the reading of his precious word. Let's just bow for just a brief prayer, please. Father, we thank you for the reading of your precious word. We bless you, Lord, that thy word is truth and thy word is life, and thy word is power. And we ask in Jesus' name as we come to the word of God now that thy thyself will come to us and bless us, and we pray for the gracious inspiration and that lovely revelation of the Holy Spirit that you will bless your word to your hearts, that it may be manna, Father, to your souls as we listen to your precious word. And we ask, O oh God, that you'll give to us spiritual understanding as we seek, Lord, to preach and proclaim and listen to thy precious word. So do draw near by the Holy Spirit and bless this message this morning, for we do ask it in the precious name of our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So my text is there, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently on him. I want to speak this morning then on prepare to wait upon God. It nearly seems to be a, a lost art today of waiting. And I'm primarily thinking about prayer, waiting upon the Lord in prayer. It says here in this lovely passage, rest in the Lord and to wait patiently for him. We are to wait for him. Wait patiently for him. There's a lovely a text that is in Psalm 62 and 5, and that's why I read that psalm this morning in the opening of our service. It said, My soul, wait thy only upon God, for my expectation is from him. My soul, wait thy only upon God, for my expectation is from him. You know, don't we live in a world today of instant consumerism? We're bombarded on every side by something you can get today, by technology, iPhones, 
internet, everything, the click of a button, and you can have it. Amazon is making billions of pounds. You can click today and have your goods delivered tomorrow. What a consumerism society we live in today. People don't have any patience. And uh, we live in a society today where we must have it now. And even you're being bombarded already by Christmas advertisements so that you can be well prepared and be well stocked up for the 25th of society. A, consu a consumerism society. And uh, we want everything instantly. We want it now. And that, I believe, has made inroads into the church of Jesus Christ. We, we live in a society today where waiting upon God is, is not something that we are encouraged to do. Waiting upon God is nearly a lost art in today's modern church system or, or modern society. As we come together to listen and to hear and to wait upon God, we're not encouraged today for that. But yet, God's work doesn't conform to our agenda. God doesn't work according to our timetable. God will do his own work in his own wonderful way and in his own wonderful time. But we're so accustomed to getting things now that we feel somehow that God will also work till our agenda. And you know, it's one of the greatest blessings and one of the greatest uh, privileges to be able to wait upon God. And the Lord has many lessons to teach us through this. And so we need to be prepared to learn to wait upon God. As a young Christian, I didn't know anything else other than prayer. Prayer was just such a natural part of the Christian life, being able to come to pray. And uh, to have a, a healthy appetite for prayer is one of the greatest blessings that you can have. And we need to develop our prayer life. We need to learn to pray. We need to spend time in prayer. So before we, we come to uh, the blessing of these precious promises, I want to bring out, as it were, there's, there's five little gems of truth here. Davy, would you go into the hall there, please, and just have a wee quick word with those folks. So here are five precious lessons and five precious blessings, and I want to bring these here before you this morning. So the first one here that I want to look at just briefly for a moment or two is found in verse 3. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Here is a wonderful jewel, a wonderful precious blessing. Notice here the key word. The key word is to trust in the Lord. That's the whole secret. And let me just ask at the outset of the service here, is that who you're trusting in? Is that who your trust is in? Is your trust in the Lord? Today, many people are trusting in everything but the Lord. But we need to place and put our trust in the Lord. So that's a challenge this morning. Are you as a Christian trusting in the Lord? Are you as a Christian depending upon the Lord for your needs. Sometimes I think we can lose sight of that, that we really are not trusting in the Lord as we ought. Because to be trusting in the Lord, first, first of all, we need the blessing of salvation. Have we trusted in the Lord for salvation? That's the greatest trust of all. First of all, we need to come to Christ. We need to trust the Lord Jesus. So to trust in the Lord is to put your faith in Christ. He's the secret. He's the key. So to be trusting in the Lord is to be trusting in the Lord 
Jesus Christ as our Savior and as our Redeemer. And if you have placed your, your faith and your trust and your belief in the Lord Jesus, well, it'll deal with the first line of the psalm, fret not thyself. You know, at times we, we worry so needlessly as Christians because we're not really trusting the Lord as we ought. You know, when you're really trusting the Lord, you're not worrying. And when you're worrying, you're not really trusting. So there's the answer. We can be fretting and worrying and getting anxious about certain situations and problems and trials in our lives, but when we're trusting in the Lord, we're resting in Him. And that's a tremendous blessing for, for, for God's people. I know there are cares and concerns, but like the hymn writer Joseph Scriven, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Trust in the Lord. Are you trusting this morning? Really, really trusting, really depending upon the Lord. So that's the first precious lesson here is Psalmist says, trust in the Lord. And then he says here in verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord. The key word is the Lord again. Delight thyself also in the Lord. What does that mean, delight? It means to take pleasure in, to take tremendous pleasure in the Lord. It means extreme satisfaction. Are you satisfied this morning as a Christian? Have you really got deep satisfaction in the Lord Jesus? Is He your all in all? And you know, when, when He is your delight, and He is your joy, and your rock, and your refuge, and your fortress, He is everything you need and more, and you can take tremendous delight in the Lord your God. And that brings such joy into the heart to delight thyself in the Lord, to take pleasure in Him. And you know, a grateful heart will bring you to that place, to be thankful for the Lord saving you, to be thankful for Him keeping you, to be thankful for the blessings that He's poured into your life, to be thankful for your health, to be thankful for your strength, to be thankful for your provision. You know, when Mandy and I were away uh, there for a few days, and to see people land in the streets in cardboard boxes for homes, begging for uh, a few crumbs, you know, you nearly feel guilty. Guilty to have a home with a roof over your head. Guilty to have a warm bed. Guilty to have a few pounds in your pocket. Guilty to be well clothed. Delight yourself in the Lord. Be thankful for all that He has done for you. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And then it says here, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know, I, we have proved that true as a family. The Lord has given us the desires of our heart. And it doesn't mean material wealth. And it doesn't mean material gain. The desires are spiritual spiritual desires, longing to see God at work in saving precious souls. And I have had the tremendous privilege of kneeling down with men and women and with boys and girls, young, young people, where they've come to that place where they've trusted Christ as their Savior. Delight thyself in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of your heart. And here's the next precious one. Uh, commit thy way unto the Lord. Verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. In other words, roll it all over unto Him. There's a commit and there's a trust. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him. And He shall bring it to pass. God has promised 
to answer prayer. They that wait upon the Lord, this committing our way unto Him, take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, the greatest thing that you can do as a Christian is to give the Lord all of your life, to commit every aspect of your life to the Lord in prayer, giving Him your all, not just a part. And that's a challenge, isn't it? Does the Lord have all of me this morning? Does He have all of my life? Is He president or resident? Does He rule over all? Have I given Him every part of my life? Am I trusting Him wholly? Am I committed to Him wholly or just partial? Have you committed every area? And when you do that, when you commit it all unto Him, when you're trusting Him, He shall bring it to pass. He shall. It doesn't say He might, but it says He shall. So this is one of the wonderful blessings. That word commit actually means to roll. In the Hebrew, in the original, it means to roll thy way unto the Lord. That commit, that rolling it over to God, just like rolling out the, the carpet. You're rolling it before the Lord. You're spreading it out. You're spreading your life out before the Lord, and you're committing your way on to Him. And then it says to rest in the Lord. It's something that's very precious to be able to say, I'm resting in the Lord. I'm resting in the Lord Jesus. Are you resting in Him this morning? I can say, and you can say, I'm resting in the Lord. I have total confidence in God's wisdom and in God's plans. You know, when you've come to that place and He gives you that rest of heart, there's nothing can disturb that. Nothing that can disturb that rest in the Lord, that wonderful rest that's in the Lord Jesus. So the psalmist says, rest in the Lord. I have said this before, that I have a recliner chair, and there's times I love to just throw it back and meditate upon Him, and rest in Him, just taking that little time not to sleep but to meditate and to rest in the Lord and let the Holy Spirit come to you in the quietness in the stillness and just wait upon the Lord and rest and just reflect and you can be assured that he will come when you take that time out of waiting and resting that the Spirit of the Lord will come to you and he will bless you with his presence, that, that total confidence and that rest in the Lord. And so, by way now, after that little introduction, I want to think about waiting in prayer. Waiting in the Lord. It said, and wait patiently on him. Waiting patiently for the Lord. This is the whole thrust of the message now. We are to wait patiently for him. So, waiting and patience go together. Do you, did you notice that? Waiting and patience go together. We are to wait on him and we are to wait for him. You can't pressurize God to come to you. We need to wait on him. It says there's a lovely picture now, and I want if you want to turn with me, please, to Maybe you know the scripture well. It's found, the verse is found in Isaiah. And it's Isaiah chapter 40. 
and it's verse 31. And here's the picture for the saint that is prepared to wait upon God. Here's the picture of the waiting saint. And the Lord gives it to us here in verse 31. And it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and faint not. Isn't that just absolutely tremendous? We see here, he says, but they, there's a condition. But they that wait upon the Lord. You see, not everybody will wait. But they that do wait, they that do take time out of the busy day, the busy morning, the busy afternoon, or the busy evening, they that do take time to wait upon God are in for a blessing. He has promised to bless those who are prepared to wait upon the Lord. And that means you've got to take time. Take time out of your busy morning or take time out of your busy afternoon or your busy evening. You will need to make time for God. The devil will see to it that you're busy or engaging in something here, there, and yonder, and you'll be so busy and engaged in that that you won't have time. But you need to make time. If you want to wait on God, you'll have to set time aside for this waiting upon him. And he says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There'll be a renewing. A renewing of spiritual strength. We all need renewed strength. Just every day as the body needs renewed and sustained by food to maintain and to go, you need that, you need that spiritual strength as well as you go on your Christian journey. And there's a promise here that that strength will be renewed. He'll renew strength. Do you need strength in your Christian walk? Do you need strength, the vigor of God in your life every day? Of course you do. When we need to wait upon God for that, so there'll be renewed strength. And then there also it says there'll be a soaring. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. It's amazing the picture here that God has given. He has given the eagle as an illustration. One of the birds of power that can soar over a, a, a six foot or maybe eight foot wing spot. I'm not just sure the exact measurements. But when the eagle puts out those mighty wings, it soars high. It just, it just has to spread them and it's uplifted underneath uh, by the power of God, the, the wind as it were, the wind of the Spirit. And he's showing a tremendous picture here of this eagle spreading its wings, of soaring high, this majestic bird soaring in strength and vitality. What a picture here of the saint as he waits upon the Lord, his, uh, spreading his spiritual wings and going to soar high with God. And the amazing thing about the eagle bird, the higher it soars, the more majestic it looks. And its eyes are both uh, telescopic and microscopic. And the higher we soar with God, the smaller our problems become. The higher the eagle gets and looks down, the smaller things become. And it's not true in the spiritual realm. The closer we get with God, the bigger the problems that were, they seem somehow a little smaller as we wait upon God in prayer. That's the secret. The problems don't go away, but somehow the Lord comes and gives us this blessed strength as we soar on with God. And he says here, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run. Here's an agility, running in power, running with, with the power of God. They shall run and not be weary. 
you know, you can get weary in, in the walk with God, can't you? You can get weary in the Christian life. You can get weary with sickness. You can get weary with problems. You can get weary with difficulties. You can get weary in your life as a Christian. And the secret for weariness is waiting. Wait upon the Lord, and that'll deal with weariness. You know, I can get weary as a pastor. I can get weary as a preacher. You can get weary in your Christian walk as well. What's the secret? What's the cure? Waiting upon God. There's times I've went into the closet to wait upon God. And, you know, I've come out skipping, dancing, and rejoicing. Because they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their spiritual strength, their spiritual vitality. It's a promise. And it says, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk, walking in strong faith. We walk the Christian walk, and we want to walk strongly and soberly and righteously and holy as we seek to walk and to go through with God. They shall walk and not faint, will be living in spiritual vitality. So here's the picture, if you like, and, and the Bible is full of pictures. The Lord loves to paint pictures to reveal spiritual truth to us. And here's this lovely picture of the eagle, the picture of the waiting saint. So if we want to know that renewed strength and that vitality, we need to be prepared to wait upon God, getting alone <clears throat> with God. Could I just maybe challenge you or ask you this morning, when was the last time you got alone with God? When was the last time that you got alone with God, that you really spent quality time in His presence, praying to Him, speaking with Him, having fellowship with Him, you know, that's what God wants most of all. He wants your time. He wants your time. That time spent in prayer. The Lord Jesus gives us tremendous insights into spending time with God. Getting alone with God, and I have just simply said it's the power of of isolation, the power of isolation, waiting in prayer. The psalmist, he reminded us in verse 34, wait on the Lord and keep his way. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. You know, there'll be rewards for waiting upon God. There's rewards for waiting on the Lord. Getting alone with God. The Lord Jesus told us all about that in Matthew 6. So to get alone with God and to know his presence, because there's times you'll need direction. Major decisions in your life. Choices that have to be made. Choices not only for ourselves, but for our families, for their futures, for our futures. And you'll need to know God's clear direction. And you need to find that for yourself. And so getting alone with God, there we can be waiting for direction. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Do you need God's direction for your life? Do you need some particular uh, guidance at this time? Are you praying, Lord, show me the way? How are you going to find that way if you're not taking time to wait upon the Lord? Be prepared to wait upon God. We can't fast track it. You can't download an app to find God's will for your life. 
You'll not get them on the smartphone or the internet, this direction that you're looking for. You've got to come to the Word of God. You've got to spend time waiting upon God with an open Bible. And if you spend time every day with the Lord, reading His Word devotionally, prayerfully, expectingly, God will speak. God will reveal Himself, and God will give you clear direction, clear guidance. He'll come through His Word by His Spirit. And you can know that assurance then, that clear direction, and that guidance, waiting for God's leading. We need to wait for God's leading and that God would give you clear direction as a Christian in the way that you need to go. We need to wait for answers. Uh, I have been praying in recent days about certain things and I'm waiting for answers. And you know, God has promised to give me answers. For they that wait upon the Lord will hear from God. He has promised that. And uh, when God gives you that answer then, it'll be such a blessing, waiting for God's leading, waiting for answers, hearing from God, waiting for assurance. Maybe you need assurance about a certain matter, uh, a, a particular situation that you've been praying into. And uh, God has wonderful ways of giving you assurance that you're going in the right direction. I use a little illustration like the, the traffic lights. The red light is when you've, uh, you've no peace. You can pray about something and say, Lord, is this the right direction that I'm going? But you've no peace about it. You're not settled in your spirit. So wait upon the Lord for his word. Wait on the word of God for guidance, for direction. And God will confirm to you if you're going in the right direction or going in the wrong direction. He'll confirm it through his word. I was asked there recently to go and take a series of meetings in the south of Ireland. And I prayed specifically, Lord, do you want me to go and speak at this conference? Give me clear direction. And as I was waiting upon the Lord the next morning, <clears throat> the Lord spoke to me and said, the Holy Spirit forbiddeth him not uh, to go into Bithynia. And in the wee daily reading, it said over the border. <laughs> now, if that's not precise, I don't know what is. And I knew <clears throat> immediately that was a clear word from God that it wasn't for me, that I wasn't to go and speak at that three or four day conference because God didn't want me to go. So I got the answer, waiting upon God. And friends, that's, that's the preciseness, that's the precision of waiting upon God. So I knew immediately. And God can say no. Or he may give you the orange light and he may say wait. And he wants, to, he wants us to pray situations through. Do you know anything about praying through, about bringing it to the Lord in prayer? Sometimes there's, there's, there's thoughts may come upon us and uh, they may come with <clears throat> a burden. And as we start to pray about that situation and over a period of time, that burden, it can either disappear completely. So that burden disappears. It, it wasn't really of God. And then there's other occasions when we start to pray about something that has come to your minds and that burden intensifies. Then that burden, the Lord places that burden on us, that particular thing that, that he wants us to do or that place he wants us to go. There's a burden that comes from the Lord, not a pressure, but a burden. And God starts to unfold that burden to us. And as we wait upon the Lord, as we take that to the Lord in prayer, and as we wait upon the Lord, eventually then that burden, he gives us a peace that we can act upon that. And he gives us that green light, that assurance, the two witnesses. He gives us his word and he gives us his peace. 
and we'll know then that we're moving in the right direction. Why? Because we have committed our way unto the Lord. And we are trusting also when he says, and he shall bring it to pass. We have found his will for our lives. You see, there's two wills of God. There's God's general will for your life. And the general will of God that he wants us to do is to obey his word. And that's general to all God's people. The general word of God, obey his word. And if you're not prepared to obey the general word of God, don't be seeking the particular will of God. You need to obey the general will of God first, and then he'll show you his particular will for your own individual life. And there's a particular will for God. And what I mean by that, the particular will, for to use an illustration, is myself. God's particular will for me is to preach his word. He has called me as a minister of Jesus Christ. He has entrusted me. This is his particular will for my life. But before he revealed the particular will of God, I had to do the general will of God. I preached here about baptism. And some of you are not baptized and you've never obeyed the word. I've preached here in other areas on the general will of God and people have never responded to it. They haven't obeyed it. And so when it comes to the particular will of God, you'll not find it until you obey the general will. And what he'll do is he'll bring the general will back to you or you're prepared to do the general will of God before you'll find the particular will of God for your life. That's a biblical fact. And uh, if you want God to use you, to use you wonderfully and mightily, you need to obey. Wait upon God. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. Waiting for blessings. Waiting upon God for a blessing for myself. There's nothing wrong with that. To pray upon, wait upon God and ask him to bless your life to guide your life, to direct your life. Ask him to bless you, to bless your children, to bless your family, and to bless others. That's all part of waiting upon God in prayer. Waiting for blessing. Isn't it amazing? We all want the blessings. But do we really want the blesser? Do we just want what God has for us? Or do we want him for himself? Do, want a, do we want a God that doesn't bless? In other words, do we just want God for who he is? If he was to remove his blessings out of your life, would you still desire him the same way? That's where the Lord wants us to, to bring us to, that it's him we desire and not what he offers. We want him for himself. And that's where he had to bring many of his servants in the Old Testament. He brought them to that place where they just wanted him, who he is, and not his blessings. Waiting for the blessings. And very quickly, the blessings of waiting upon God in prayer and uh, as we spend time in prayer, we realize this. As for God, his ways are perfect. You know, when I look back over my life, I can thank God as I waited upon him and he sh revealed his word to me and his ways to me and, and I was obedient to what he showed me. It has protected me from trouble from tears, and from misery by obeying God's word. It has protected me. 
And you know, if you'll seek the Lord, you remember David, the children of Israel and Joshua, because they didn't wait on God, the Gibeonites deceived them. Because they didn't spend time waiting on God. And if you don't spend time waiting on God, you too could be deceived by thinking this is of God and it's not. Don't go by feelings. Don't go by emotion. Many today are trapped in emotion. Go to big uh, Christian meetings where there's so much emotion, where the music uh, has brought them into a state of ecstasy and they're caught up in emotion and there are spirits that are operating who are deceiving people and they're caught up in that and because they don't know the word of God and haven't been waiting upon God, have made decisions that have been catastrophic. Catastrophe for their lives as believers because they haven't known the blessing of waiting upon God. And so I would encourage you to wait on the Lord and it'll deliver you from trouble, from tears and from misery as you wait on God. And it, <clears throat> it keeps me in the center of his will. Waiting upon God will keep you in the center of God's will. That's where you want to be as a Christian. If you stop waiting from God, let me, let me say it very quickly. Take a circle. And if you're in the center of God's will and you're spending time in prayer reading God's word and fellowshipping with God's people and he has you in the center of your in the, the will, just stop waiting upon God for a number of days and eventually you'll move to the outside circle. You'll move to the periphery of God's will. You'll be drawn away from the center of his will and you'll soon then get out of his will if you stop waiting upon the Lord in prayer. And that's why so many Christians are miserable. Uh, some people don't like the way I preach, but I just tell the truth. So many Christians are miserable. They're living a miserable, miserable, miserable Christian existence. And the reason is because they're outside of the will of God. There's no joy in their life. There's no happiness in their life. There's no radiance in their life. They live a miserable existence because they're not living in the center of God's will. As a man said to me on one occasion, <coughs> he says, I met this woman and he says, she opened up her mouth, he says, and she looked at me and he says, I've seen these big crocodile teeth. She scared the life out of me. And another man said, I was going into this church and this man gave me a book and um, he said, here, and he threw this book into his hand and the, it was actually the preacher who was coming to speak at the meeting. And he says, tell him, he says, lend me your face. He says, I want to go and haunt a house. Friends, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we want to be in the center of his will. And that will keep the joy there. <coughs> it comforts me in the tough days. Waiting upon God will bring us comfort in the tough days. And it teaches me his ways and keeps my heart warm when I'm waiting upon the Lord. You know, as a Christian, there's no such a thing as self-sufficiency. If you can get through without prayer, I question if you're saved at all. If you can get through without prayer as a professing Christian, I question if you're saved at all. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. And waiting upon God and finishing is this. It teaches me the value of my relationship with him. It teaches me the value of my relationship with him. It's valuable. It's precious. It's the most precious possession I have is my relationship with the Lord Jesus. 
The hymn writer said, I need thee every hour. I want to say I need thee every minute. I need thee every second. For without thee, I can do absolutely nothing. God has a purpose in making us wait. You know, there are some people, and uh, I have come to know over the years, and God had to bring sickness into their lives and lay them aside to get them to wait upon God. Because they were so busy, they hadn't time to hear. But when he placed them in a bed of sickness and a bed of languishing, then they could hear and listen and wait to what God had to say. So we need to learn uh, the Lord's lessons of trusting in him, waiting upon him, of knowing why he brings these uh, trials and burdens and deliverances. We need to learn the lesson of obedience and waiting upon God. My soul, wait thy only upon God, for my expectation cometh from him. I trust as you go into this week that you'll take time to wait upon God. May the Lord bless his word to all our hearts this morning for his name's sake.